All right, without further ado, I would like to present to some and introduce to other the pastor, the author, the songwriter, the father, the, the, the husband, the man of God, the man with a word <laughs> from above, our own very special pastor, Nathan Salters. <laughs> I think I'm going to start paying her. I, 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 she be, I, she, every, when, when she be sharing, saying that, I be looking around like, who's this person she talking about? <laughs> Lachey, you are amazing. I, seriously, I think I'm a, I think uh, you and Sherman, I may have to pay y'all to, to introduce me. <laughs> you make me feel so wonderful. Thank you. I appreciate that. How are you doing tonight? Not tonight, Lord. Y'all pray for me. Y'all, y'all see, I've been, it's, it has been the busiest season of my life. But God has been good. We've been, I miss you guys the last few weeks. Uh, I've, been minist- I've been preaching a lot on Sunday, so I'm sorry I missed you guys the last few weeks. And, um, but I'm so happy to see you again today. God is good. God is good. Amen. I, you know, I, I'm so, I ain't going to lie. I'm super excited because um, um, every time I know God gives me something to share, I get excited because I know it's not me. And all I got to do is deliver the package, shut up, and sit down, right? Isn't that easy? <laughs> Only time that I'm a little, like, nervous is when I think it's something I want to say. And um, I've learned early in ministry that, uh, you know, sometimes when you minister, the easiest thing to do, um, I'm, I've learned to spend more time in prayer hearing from him than to spend time away from prayer trying to get a message. Does that make sense to anybody? Because a lot of people, they prepare for what God called them to do, but they don't prepare in prayer. And in prayer, you get specifics and you get keys to what he wants you to do. And so I started saying, okay, well, Lord, thank you. And since I've been doing, I have to admit, it has taken a lot of pressure off me. Uh, So uh, I am so amazed that every, everything from what brother Rob was saying when he got up, every song, Sister Cheryl song, I'm sitting here saying to myself, I know this is the Lord that wants us to hear this today. So I am encouraged. I am so excited to hear. And it's something because it's something that you guys probably heard many times. But I think that today uh, we're going to get a different perspective. So uh, we bless God for Pastor Alice and Vivian. Um, I don't take it for granted that they asked me to uh, cover for them when they're away uh, because I know that they're very particular about who speaks. And so I don't take that for granted. So I honor God for them. Let's bless God for them. I know. Let's pray that they enjoy themselves wherever they are. Um, pray for me after I leave here. I go to. I have to go minister again. Um, and so, um, but yeah, it has been. When I tell y'all, it has been the last one month. Seemed like overnight. Um, it just seemed like God is like, I need you in this season. And I, it just seemed like back to back to back to back to back to back to back. And so it's, and keep praying because it's still, it's still, it's picking up even more, but I'm just so happy to be here. But listen, let me give you the package that I'm supposed to deliver to y'all. <laughs> I love it. I just, let me just give it to you, <laughs> but give it to you and I'm a run. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, so um, just bow your heads with me. Father, I thank you so much for this privilege to be here with my family. Um, I love them so much. This is such a blessed church. And God, I thank you for allowing me to even just uh, partner with them and just be in their life. These people are so amazing, God, and I just, I'm so honored to know them and just to be in their presence. Thank you again, Lord, for allowing me to to deliver this package for you, Lord. I don't take it for granted. I pray that everyone will leave with exactly what they need. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's go to a scripture that you guys love, Psalms 23. Psalms 23, and it's so funny, it's so funny because um, in uh, This is exactly what he told me to say. It was for me, it was kind of so simple that I almost missed it because, you know, I like to I like to get a bunch of scriptures. I like to make, you know, and it was and I kept getting back to just just follow what I'm telling you. So I don't know who needs this, but I'm sure that it's in the room. Okay, so look at what he says in verse one and two Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Verse two. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. I'm going to turn uh, your attention real quick to John chapter 10. I just want to read this, and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, connect what, uh, pretty much share what God told me to say. And um, I do, please, please, 
please pray that this be a blessing to you because um, I know it spoke to me um, every time um, God's word speak. I get super excited. So John chapter 10, verse one through five. And let me just read this for you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way. The same is a thief and a robber. Verse two, but he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Verse three, to him, uh, to him, the porter openeth and the sheep hear his voice and he calleth his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. Verse four, and when he put it forth his own sheep, he goeth before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. Verse five. And a stranger will they not follow, but will follow what will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Oh, Lord. Y'all ready? <laughs> all right. So uh, when we read, um, all of us in here know that um, the Lord is the good shepherd. Who in here, I'm going to talk a little bit today. Um, if you can do me a favor, just look at somebody, just say, he is leading me. Now, the reason why that should encourage you is because when God leads you, he never tells you where he's going to lead you. That's where we mess up. We know he's leading us, but why are you taking me this way, God? I know you're leading me, but why? Have you ever asked God why this way? <laughs> okay, so this, I want to make sure we're in the right place. <laughs> because you, you have the peace and assurance that it's him. But the direction is what's messing you up. The direction is what got you got anxiety, taking pills, and, and ready to uh, just call everybody. I don't know what God is doing. Why is this happening? It's, well, that's the problem. <laughs> sheep are so dumb I'm not calling nobody here dumb you know <laughs> sheep <laughs> sheep are very dumb they actually walk with their head down and the funny thing about the you know the scripture that blew my mind was when he took me to Psalm 23 he says he, uh, he maketh me to lie down I want to talk real quick about the word maketh because I used to think maketh means that he beats the sheep and make them sit down. And that's not what it means. What make it really means is that sheep in the sheep nature, sheep can't lay down unless they have no fear. If there's fear, the sheep will never stop and, and rest. So the way he make it the sheep lie down is he got to remove fear from your life. Mm. You think he's making, so what he's doing is he's got you. He says, just follow me. And as you're following him, he's leading you through the valley of shadows of death. And, but David says something, but I fear no evil for thou art with me. This is the only way I can go to sleep tonight is because he's with me. I, I just preached a couple of Sundays ago uh, about uh, um. God is pushing my stroller. Can I sh can I share y'all this little revelation? I took I take my daughter Dara to the park and I push her in the stroller and I go for my little walk and my little prayer walk around the lake and and I'm walking and I I look at her because her stroller she's facing me. So when I'm pushing her, she have no idea sure where I'm taking her. Long as she sees her father. She's at peace. She's never said, Dad, why are we going down this path? Why we? She don't even care. Long as I know who's pushing this thing. And I said to myself, that is the problem. We don't know who's pushing our strollers. That's why we're not resting. So he says, listen, first of all, my sheep hears my voice. So he says, I got to get the sheep to hear my voice. Because if they can hear my voice, they'll sleep. They'll rest. So the enemy's job is to get you not to know his voice. So that's why every time we pick this up, you get sleepy. Oh, not nobody here. 
every time you say, oh, I'm going to read a chapter, all of a sudden your favorite shows come on that night. Isn't that something? <laughs> because the job is for you not to know his voice. Because if you can't hear his voice, when he brings you into pastures and hills and valleys, you're going to say, this ain't God. And fear kicks in, and, and God is like, why are you afraid when I'm with you? So what happens is he says, listen, let me, let me just, just, just follow me. So what he does is, let me, let me turn this off because I hear uh, my little thing blinging and beeping, and, and I don't want to, uh, uh, you know, get nothing in the way of the message. So he walks us, and he takes us down these different paths. And the funny thing about it, the sheep never tells the shepherd where the sheep wants to go. The sheep never says, uh, Mr. Shepherd, uh, before we start walking, can you take me Tops, Wegmans? Uh, the sheep don't even know, have absolutely no say in the paths. The only thing the sheep's supposed to do is what? So watch this. The first thing God does when he leads us is he wants to lead us through his voice. But then you have some of us sheep who don't know his voice. So guess how he has to lead them sheep? Somebody take a guess. Oh, oh she's asking. Cheryl got the anointed. You know, you, know that, you know that little thing the shepherd have in his hand? We call it a staff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, that little, you know. So, so, so why, every, why you have some people who don't move until they hear the voice, you have some other people who move not hearing the voice, and then all of a sudden they get taps. And all of a sudden, you moving left. You're like, why am I going this way? Yeah. All these doors are shutting over here. And this is God moving you <laughs> because you're not listening through the voice. Isn't that something? But he loves you so much that he's still saying, I'm leading you. Whether you get tapped or through my voice, I'm the one leading you. Now, the thing about uh, uh, in Psalms 23, so watch this. Verse 1 says, the Lord is my shepherd. Who in here believe he is the shepherd? Now, if we don't even get to the Lord as my shepherd, you might as well throw verse two in the garbage. Because a lot of people try to get to verse two. He making me lie down. And who is making you lie down? So we got to first get a conviction that he is the shepherd. If we don't get that conviction, verse two, you ain't going to never have peace to lie down. So God is trying to bring us back to a place of, listen, you got to make sure you know it's me pushing your stroller. You got to make sure it is me that is shutting that door because some doors God will shut for your benefit. I, I, could, I still remember clearly many doors I tried to kick. And now I'm, I, now I'm older. I'm like, thank you, Lord. For not letting that door open, I I, I always I always reference back in the day, uh, like when I was young and 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 uh, when I think I was like in eighth grade. I always I think I was sharing this last time I was here speaking about this young lady when I was in eighth grade who I was just like, oh, if I don't have her, oh my world is all around this one young lady. I just want to be with this one young lady, and the girl rejected me. And now I'm older and I got the blessing of my life. I look back and still and see the person that I was crying over in eighth grade. I'm like, God, I thank you. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, at the time, the rejection hurt it. <laughs> but he was leading me <laughs> because he saw green pasture. Because he's trying to bring us to green pasture, not just pasture. He wants to, the pasture God has for you is green. You know what green means? Healthy, vibrant, blessings. He's not trying to just give you anybody. He want to give you the best. He want to give you his best. But our problem is there's another person speaking, the thief, the robber, who like to look at sheep and say, I really want one of them sheep. And the only way I can get in there is to look like one. <laughs> so they come to church, Brother Up. All on the inside, they sit next to you. They say, praise the Lord next to you. But they drooling, sitting next to you because they want to devour you. So why they sit next to your church and you clapping and praising God and 
they sit right next to you, the thief, the wolf, is sitting right next to you looking just like a sheep. <laughs> just to get you. And then when they get you, they stop coming to church. Because they were not a sheep. Amen. They came to take a sheep. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. So this is why he says, my sheep knows my voice. And a stranger, because there are strange voices. I, you know what? Some years ago, they, that's why it's good to have good leaders. Because when I, um, my leader was so amazing. I'm a, I, I'll share you story because I'm, I want to show you the, what it looks like to be around. When you're a sheep, sometimes you need sometimes an under shepherd to help you hear God's voice because sometimes you can't hear it clear. I just got saved, and I was involved in our youth, youth ministry. Um, and I remember that the first year we got saved, there, and back in, back in, this was in 1993, there was this choir in the city of Buffalo. This was probably the most amazing choir you will ever hear sing. It was about a, 150 young people from all over the region. They would go sing everywhere. And when I tell you when they would sing, the power of God would fall. People would be, uh, damn, they would, they would, we would go to the mall and sing, and people would be dancing in the mall we would, everywhere they went. And young people from every ministry would gather with this particular choir. Now watch this. I was barely new. I just came off the streets, and, and, but I was so intrigued with this. But I was under a good leader who can hear from God. Our leader was away at a convention. He gets home and he says, I need to meet with all the young people. So all the young people stayed at the church. And he stood right in front of all the young people. He says, if you are a part of this choir, get out. And I'm like, okay. And it was about seven of us young people from that church. He says, get out now. I was in the airplane. The Lord says, there's danger. Get out. And I'm thinking, oh, you know, well, I'm going to miss my friends. But something in me said, just listen to this man. My other friend stayed. Now, I, I pray this story don't be, don't, don't, uh, but it, it's, it really happened. My friend stayed. I got out. A couple of us got out, and I just submitted to the under shepherd because I could not hear God's voice myself. Right after that experience, it came out that the director was raping the people in the choir. He was molesting the boys, and then the person who did not leave got raped. So if it came down to the way things look, that group was sheep. Because they knew how to dance, they knew how to sing, they knew how to, and it was all gospel music. But on the inside, when they got the sheep alone, the wolves came out. To the point that some of them, some of them has never came back to church. Some of them now has switched their identity because they got raped by a man. I've seen three of them who now had a full uh, gender change because of that experience. And it breaks my heart. And I was in it. I was in it, thinking, hey, I'm, I'm be in the shepherd because God was looking out for me. He, and he said, because you don't know my voice yet, I'm going to bring you a pastor who can speak to help you because he's directing my path. He's leading me. So he got me out because he saw the danger. If he was not, now watch this, if he was not a good pastor, he would have been like, eh, they're just young people. Let them sing with whoever, long as it's for Jesus. But people forget there is a thief who come to take sheep. Amen. We got to look for those folk because they come in events like this just to pull people out of the fold. That was 30 years ago. They finally caught the guy. He's, he's in prison for life for all the people he's abused. But what I'm trying to show you was I saw it firsthand. And the thing that baffled me the most was why, was it, why did it seem like God was moving when they were singing? That's the part that messed me up. It wasn't like we went and sung and you didn't feel no, it was like you, 
you couldn't even go to a rehearsal without people getting slain in the spirit. So it wasn't like it was an outward manifestation. So that's what confused me because I'm like, this must be God. <laughs> but sheep and wolves, I tell you right now, they, they cause it. That's why you need people who can hear. If that man was not in the airplane and heard, I probably would have been in the fold. Messed up. You see what I'm trying to say? So when he says, the Lord is my shepherd, if we believe that he's my shepherd, then the people, the people that God put in our life, we got to trust that when they speak to us, God is speaking through them to help us be directed. They're not trying to control you. They're trying to help you. So if they say to you, don't marry this man, they ain't trying to stop, keep you single. Sometimes God will tell them because you can't hear. You can't hear that this man is going to abuse you. You can't hear it because look at his arms. <laughs> He's six feet five. I can't. I, I, Lord, you're going to make it work. And God's like, and, and, and then God will say, somebody say, I don't do it. I'm leading you. And sometimes the way I'm leading you may disappoint you because you don't like this path. But later you're going to appreciate the shepherd. So sometimes he let that little tap come. And sometimes we, we just try to force it. And then all of a sudden, you know, I heard I, I, there was a story that happened with a young man. Um, he, he was dating this young lady. And through the whole process, he was feeling uneasy that she was really the person for him. I probably wouldn't have did it this way. But... I would have definitely probably wouldn't have did it this way. <laughs> they get to the wedding. <laughs> Somebody said, uh oh. <laughs> she walks in. Uh, I was going to sing the music, but I get them confused with the graduation music. Dun, 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 dun. What is that? Is that the graduation? Dun, 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 dun. Is that graduation? Oh, dun, dun, dun. oh see, y'all pray for me. Because I did that one time. I was on the organ at a graduation. And I started praying wedding music. And people were looking at me like, what? <laughs> so y'all pray, pray my strength to the Lord. But yeah, so she walks in in the white dress. This is a true story. Walks in in the white dress. And the brother never came. <laughs> Lord, help me, Jesus. Why y'all laughing? Y'all need to repent. <laughs> Everybody who listened to this, y'all repent. They, I'm just teasing. I'm kidding. <laughs> he never came. Now, Everybody was mad at him. Again, I wouldn't have did it that way because I know that was very embarrassing. Now, the brother is married to somebody he know now is from the Lord. But imagine, but this is where I got to respect him. I believe the shepherd somewhere was trying to lead him through the dating. He just was, he, you know, I think he just didn't want to hurt her. But I think the day of the wedding, it just got so overwhelming that the shepherd's voice was so overwhelming that he was like, I just can't go in there because this is not the woman for me. So, yeah, he did not do it. But then a couple of years later, he did it with peace, with, with a smile, with the right person. Why am I saying that? It's because sometimes when we are about to make a bad decision, it hurts, but you're feeling a tap. I, felt, I think he felt the tap that morning. That's why he didn't come in. Because he was about to, and God was like, run, run. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. And he ran against everybody's opinion. Because I believe the shepherd was trying to get his attention. And sometimes you're going to have to do that. To follow God, sometimes other people ain't going to like the decisions you make. Everybody's going to want you to go this way. But God is saying, go left. And you don't know why God's telling you to go left. And you're like, but God, you sure this way is so much easier. The shepherd is saying, go on that. Well, God, why? And then you go this way. Now you're scared. You're nervous because you've never been here before. And he says, now I'm going to make you lie down over here. You have been. You know how to lie down over here because this was you doing it. But let me make you lie down when you at a place that you've never been. So now you're over here nervous. And then he says, go ahead go to sleep. You're like, I can't. I can't go to sleep because I don't like this path. And you know what God said? God said something to me, Rob, that helped me personally. He says, you know what the problem with my people is my people always focus on the how and not the who. Mm -hmm. 
we focus more on how God go do something than who is doing it. If I know God is doing it, why am I so busy focusing on the how? I focus more on the how, the path, why you, going, why you want me to go right, why you want me to go left. And God says, why are you even focusing on that? Your, do- your daughter ain't asking you all these questions when you push her in the stroller. She's going wherever the daddy takes her. <laughs> Who in here is making up in your mind today? You're going to go to sleep tonight. Uh-oh, three hands. Jesus, help us. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I can tell you right now, if you are not sleeping good, if you are tossing and turning, if you're worried about something that ain't happened, if you're, if you're, oh Lord, what about this? If you feel anxiety, I can promise you, you are unsure about verse one of Psalms 23. Because if he's really your shepherd, you'll go. <laughs> <laughs> drooling and everything wiping up oh boy it's a brand new day <laughs> seriously it's really true one of your greatest tests of trusting God is resting it's one of the greatest signs you can't say I'm trusting God and anxious at the same time you can't you I promise you there has been things I spent 20 years worrying about and then the moment I said God I put it in your hands that's when God worked it out And he worked it out because now I'm in green pastures. He could not work it out while I was up all night. He's like, why are you up and I'm up at the same time? (laughs) You go to sleep. I'll stay up for you. No, Lord, why don't you go to sleep? I'll stay up and fix it because I don't like the way you're doing it. That's what we're saying. That's really what we say. That's why we don't sleep because we're up all night trying to fix the paths. We're up all night trying to fix how he's leading me, and God says, hey, just go to sleep and focus on who's leading you. Because if he is your good shepherd, he promised he's going to lead you to green pastures. And I promise you this, if your green pastures is there, I know God has a tendency of doing this. All God, you're here. God want to get you here. And this is what God often do. He says, okay, come here. Come, come on, Miss Cheryl. And then Cheryl st- grabs God's hand, and Cheryl looks over at the green pasture. She says, ooh, this is going to be a nice quick trip. And God goes like this. And Cheryl, like, where are we going, Lord? Lord, Jesus, uh, the green pasture is over there. Lord, where, where are we going? Uh, God, what are you doing? Um, you don't, you don't, this is not making sense. Lord, this is, this is not making sense, Lord. I don't understand, Lord. And then he goes this way, and then he goes like this. And sure it's like, but the green pastures over here, Lord, why is we going this way? Why is we going this way? And then he says, okay, go ahead and lie down. By the time she gets here, that little trip was not for God. (laughs) That whole trip was for Cheryl. He could have just took her like this. But he had to take her that way to get her to see him as the shepherd. So to finalize this message, the children of Israel gets delivered from Egypt. And they had an 11-day journey to just go to their promised land. And God says, here, let's go this way. He didn't do that because he was punishing them. He said, y'all never owned nothing before. Y'all, y'all been slaves all your life. You don't even know ownership. So let me take you this way to teach you that I'm your shepherd, and then I'll give you the land. And when he took them this way, they got so disgruntled that they stayed for 40 years. Isn't that something? <laughs> 40 years, and they should have went, whoosh, boom. So the trip for 40 years was not for God. It was for God to show them that I'm your shepherd. <laughs> I pray this is helping somebody. <laughs> so wherever you're at right now I'm just telling you right now if, if you can join me because I'm, I'm I don't know something has happened in my life I'm getting more to the place the whole month of June was a month where my personal study was in trust in the Lord I just been reading studying every scripture about trust because I, I got tired of saying God I trust you and I did and, I, and my actions didn't show it I got tired of saying God I trust you 
I would sing about it. But then the moment God said go left, I questioned him. That ain't trust. And, I, and, it, and it convicted me. I'm starting to say it. And so I went to this deep. June was my month of just going into. And I said, wow, Lord, I get it now. You're trying to make your people understand I'm your shepherd. That's the only way he can make us lie down. I promise you, there is a rest. There is a snore for God's people that we have not even tapped into yet because we are still trying to be God. God is like, just go to sleep. I got this. I got your situation. It's funny. I, oh my! See, I, see, I, it's hard to talk. It's hard to preach to y'all because I don't like leaving. I don't like leaving. I hate it. I know. I love you guys. But do you know? I I I said something, and I know I mentioned relationships and stuff a lot because it's it's an area that I know in my life that was an area that I tried to help God out a lot. If I would have now that I have gotten my promised land with my wife, being with my wife. I go, I wish, sometimes I'm like, now I'm, I see where the good shepherd was taking me. I kind of wish I can go back now and start the journey over. Because I did a lot of dumb stuff here because I didn't know that was there. Does that, you, know, <laughs> you do stuff today because you don't see what's tomorrow. But if you saw what he's about to bless you with, you're going to be like, well, why was I up all night with this? You're going to be like, oh, my God, I invested into something thinking I needed to work my own situation out. And you had no idea that God was about to bless you. You have people over here who buying houses and I'm, I'm going, I got to do this my way. I got to do this my way. And you have no idea. You are two days away from somebody walking to you, giving you keys to a brand new house. I told y'all about my trip to Israel. I was over here back in the day struggling, saving money. Matt, I was eating cereal for breakfast, lunch, and dinner because I was broke. And I'm going to be honest, but I was taking my little $10 and I was putting in this little envelope saying one day I'm going to go to Israel. And I'm saving this little $10 and putting this little $2 here and there. The trip was almost $4,000. That's going to take me forever. And I'm over here saving and... One day, Lord, you will bless me. Do you know the moment I got to some revelation somewhere in my life that he was my shepherd, I was so focused on him being my shepherd that somebody came up to me and gave me an envelope and said, full paid trip to Israel. How did that happen? It's because I was in a position to see him as shepherd. Over here, he wasn't my shepherd. I was still trying to make it happen because I didn't trust his way and it would have took me 30 years over here when I, he 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 took me through a path so long that I got to the place I said I trust whatever you do and it was in that season that the person I kid you not and it's funny is the on the on the envelope the person says anonymous pack your bags you had a full full paid trip to Israel so I I thought it was a joke I actually looked at it and I threw it down. I said, this is a lie. And I opened it again and it had everything. It had my date. It said, all you, all you need to do is pack bags. You don't have to pay tickets or nothing. And I'm like, how did I? Oh, oh, that's what green pasture looks like. I forgot. Over here, I'm in pasture, but it ain't green. <laughs> so when a good shepherd leads us, he always leads us to, he wants to be the provider for your things over here. All he says is, but, you, but we can't even get excited about Psalms 23 verse 2 unless we embrace Psalms 23 verse 1. He is my shepherd. Let's bow our heads in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you so much, Father, for your goodness. Father, today we declare collectively that you will be our shepherd we are tired of leading our own lives lord we are going to trust wherever you lead us we don't understand everything father we don't understand the people who walk out of our life walk into our life we don't understand why this thing shut why this thing open we have no idea but today 
we are going to focus on the who and not the how. You are a good shepherd and we are going to worship you and praise you because we know you are making us to lie down in green pastures. And so, Lord God, we thank you that tonight we are going to go to sleep. Tonight, we ain't going to be anxious. We ain't going to be worried. We ain't going to be anxious for anything. We are going to put our trust and hope in the one who's leading us. In Jesus' wonderful name, we pray. Amen. Do me a favor and go to three people and say, listen, follow the good shepherd. Come on, go to three people and say, follow the good shepherd. Follow the good shepherd.